Well, here we are, Derek, at uh, the church that's become our recording home for the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, bit warmer than normal, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a change to come <laughs> when uh, we don't have all the extra heaters to uh, yeah. get us going a bit. <laughs> Just half a foot of rain out there today. <laughs> but, uh, but it feels pretty comfortable tonight. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to finish the CD today. Uh, and uh, how do you feel it's gone so far? Well, um, I'm pretty pleased with it. And uh, we're at the last hurdle tonight with the last uh, three numbers. So yeah. that's a nice, uh, kind of nice feeling to be yeah. at the last uh, session. Yeah. And uh, not for the first time, the band find themselves in the studio um, looking at a piece of music for the first time and then having to record it. Yeah, well, it's been part of the band's history, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as always, the band are fantastic at doing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I would say at this point, a thanks to the band. Yeah. Uh, I know what it's like when you're accompanying solos uh, for session after session. It's not yeah. the sometimes the most interesting thing to do, uh, but they're great as always. Yeah, and I mean, I guess I would say it, wouldn't I? But they are a, a remarkable group of uh, musicians. Yeah, it's terrific. Travelling from all parts of the country yeah. to get here for a, you know, a 5:45 uh, studio kickoff is remarkable. Yeah. Now th this CD, you didn't want it to be just like any other solo CD, did you? No disrespect to any other so solo no, CD. No, I didn't. You, it would have been easy. It would have been easy just to pick another 12 tracks and yeah. and record them solos again, all that kind of thing. But uh, I didn't want it to be that way. So I think we've got a good mix of new material and previously unrecorded material. Including a solo that was your very first euphonium solo, Starry Crown. Yeah, that was my first solo I remember playing in the senior band at uh, Hamilton Temple back in the 70s, mm. which sounds funny even to say that phrase now. Yeah. But there we are, and I remember playing a Starry Crown. So it's kind of nostalgic and personal. But still a good thing to, to record that solo. Yeah. And it's important to acknowledge those influences that have been so significant to you, isn't it? Uh, very much so, and, and that's very much a theme uh, of the CD. Another piece that uh, intrigued me when you decided to, to put it on the CD was uh, Ray Solo. Uh, now, if I was uh, Ray's first signing in the band, you were Ray's first big money signing <laughs> in the band. <laughs> And yeah, I'm sure uh, he's up in heaven there, just smiling at the he guy is. that he signed. Who's he's, he's forgotten about the money, but um, <laughs> the signing is probably very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the solo The Pathway actually goes back before the, the staff band. Ray Boz was leading a, a musician's councils uh, in Glasgow, and I was probably 16, 17 at the time. And that was a featured piece uh, for a demonstration that yeah. he was leading on that day. So to to come full circle and, uh, and record that is kind of special. Yeah, and am I right in thinking that in, in some way you enjoyed a special relationship with Ray and this is your way in the CD of honouring uh, Ray's influence on you? Because he was, he was a wonderful musician, wasn't he? Yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, he was a great musician. And uh, I would say, and I think I've said to you before, we still consider some of his mm. fundamentals mm. musically that he talked about, mm. uh, even in today's musical context. Um, so yeah, it's very special to do the, do the pathway. Um, yeah, I think we had a, I guess our musical rapport, uh, we understood uh, each other in terms of musical expression and sometimes the musical nuance that, uh, that affects sure. the piece of music. And I think you and I have said before that whilst Ray, Stedman Allen uh, and Norman and Les rightly received uh, a lot of acknowledgement and affirmation mm -hmm. for the quality of their writing and their, their leadership and their musicianship. In some way, Ray is an underestimated figure in the history of Salvation Army music making, isn't he? Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, I guess you would say that Ray Boz was a kind of the quintessential English gentleman. <laughs> he was, yeah. And, and maybe that's kind of why, but in some ways that was one of his best attributes too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being that because yeah. uh, you know he, he, he meant what he said and, and he did what he did with uh, with great intention yeah. Yeah. yeah so you've been in the band quite a, a long while now this CD is in no way a sort of drawing a line in the sand how do you keep your uh, appetite and enthusiasm for playing you know what I'm, I'm sure now you've got your next sure, project sure, you've got sure. your next initiative in mind sure. how do you keep yourself how do you keep yourself well firstly going? I've always enjoyed playing but above that, I've always enjoyed practicing. And uh, I was speaking to someone at the weekend at our music councils, and they were asking me that very question. Mm. And I said, well, 
whatever I do this weekend, I'll still be practicing tomorrow. And for me, I think that's, that's the key uh, to, to keeping a standard and even improving it. Well, as somebody that sat opposite you and stands in the middle every week, it's, it's remarkable uh, how consistent you are, you're always in shape, and you clearly, you clearly love playing. When you, when you reflect on um, all the years you've done in the band, is there that one, that one memory that you have that, that will be mm. particularly special? In some ways, it's a, a, a ridiculous question to mm. ask, mm. but is there one thing that you would like to share with me that, that's really been very special to you in I your I think, time there, there are, as you say, there's so many moments that you could pick out, uh, such big occasions, you know, the ISB 120, the congresses, uh, the, the tours, uh, the recordings. Uh, but sometimes it comes down to a, a musical moment. And I can remember playing uh, solos like uh, uh, Annie Laurie, which we associate with Dearest Name in the Salvation Army, and more recently, When He Cometh. And these little moments which actually became very special I remember, it's interesting you say that, uh, thinking back two or three weekends uh, to the Sunday morning when you played When He Cometh, I remember putting the baton down and thinking, I don't think I'll ever hear that played better. It was a, it was a very, very special and, and poignant moment. And they're actually the moments that, that you remember after, yeah, the, after the big, after know, the the, big occasions. They are special moments to treasure. Mm -hmm. and, and people say that about s certain pieces of music within yeah. the Salvation Army. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You ask people about my treasure or reserve or just as I am, and that does that kind of thing we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time here. We're due to be playing in just a few minutes, so I think we ought to start getting some music out. You need to start getting your warm up. Well, I need down. to play a few notes to and, uh, make sure it's. Uh, let's hope in order. that tonight's <laughs> session goes as well as all the other ones. Well, we wish um, you well tonight, Derek. I'm ready to go. And congratulations on what you've done already. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks.